Hey everyone, Dave Martin here with another extra self-isolation video. Uh, again, just doing some modeling to prepare for another pro program video. Let's take a look at this bolt over here. I'm going to update it to have a family table. So I'll start by clicking on it with the left mouse button, then using the open command from the mini toolbar. And here, taking a look at the model tree, here we have the main protrusion for the shaft. Let me change this name over here. I'll call it shaft. And let me go to the edit dimensions command. Now I'll go to tools, switch dimensions. And here we have the D1 dimension. Let's change that name to length. And here we have the D0 dimension. Let's change that one to the shaft diameter. Now let's take a look at the next feature in the model tree. So that is the head. Let me rename that one. And we can see that there are two different dimensions over here. Here we have the D2 dimension, which I'm going to call that one the head diameter. And the D3 dimension, I'm not going to use that anywhere, so I don't really need to change that name. Next up, we have a cut in here. And when I edit definition of the cut, I see that this is made in a way I really don't like. So it's got a depth of 0 0.5. If I go into the placement tab, it's got an internal sketch. Let me click edit. And so the way that this feature has been done is that they sketched an oversized rectangle. Let's see, there's some dimension over here. I can't even see where it is on the screen here. There it is. Here we have this dimension over here. They just made it wide enough so that it completely intersects the part. And that is not a good way of modeling. And it's not going to be robust enough for the family table that I'm going to make. So I'm going to cancel out of here and hit the check mark. And now I am going to use insert mode to put the cut in there that I want. One second, let me take a look at the different dimensions in here. Let me go to switch dimensions. Okay, 0.6 wide, 0.5 deep. That's the important information for me. So I will use insert mode, which let me get out of that. Insert mode to put the real cut that I want in here instead. Let me turn on my datum plane display. So I'm going to sketch on the datum plane called front. And let me go to the model tab. I'm actually going to use the sketch command. And let me go to sketch setup. I want to make sure that I'm using the correct references. I want this surface to face the top of my screen. The reason that I'm changing the orientation reference plane is just to make sure that I am getting a sketch reference automatically there. So let's go to the sketch view. I don't need to see my planes anymore, so let's unclutter the screen. And I just want to make a rectangle in here. And I want that rectangle to be symmetric, so it helps if I throw in a center line first. Now I will go to the rectangle command and then let it snap over here. And if I remember correctly, it was 0.6 wide and 0.5 deep. Let me grab that and drag it off of the part so I can see it. That is good. Now I will hit the check mark. And with the sketch still selected, I'll click on the extrude command. Here we have the depth drag handle. Oops, let me change my zoom so I'm just getting the depth drag handle. Now when I right click over the depth drag handle, I can choose from here, hey, let's do two sides through all. Never notice that command there in the pop-up menu. Nice quick way of getting it uh, to it. So that is good for the cut. Let me hit the check mark to bring it back. And then let me grab this, drag it down over here. And you see a bunch of different features fail in the model uh, because by putting in that additional cut, I end up removing geometry that are references for other features. And actually with this cut over here, now let me just suppress it to get rid of it. Oh, can't suppress it. Unless I go to the options over here and you can see that we have the different children of the feature. 
from the children handling dialog box, instead of suppressing, I can choose to suspend the features, which means that they are immediately going to fail as soon as I click the OK button. So I'll click OK. Oh, they should have failed, but they didn't. But anyhow, let's take a look at the different rounds here in the model. I'm going to edit definition of this one. And you can see that's using a radius of 0 0.2, 0.08. And we have three different chains of references that it's using. That one is fine. It doesn't have any problems. Here we have another round that is failing. And I'm going to use a command that I've wanted to make a video for uh, for quite a while. Edit references. I just have not had a really good model to show this one. But when I am doing Creo Parametric in my day job, I use edit references all the time. And edit references allows you to change the different children of features. And we can see that here we have a we have two surfaces that are being used to create a round. It's using surface to surface references. I will select this surface and it's saying, hey, I don't know what happened to the surface. Highlights where it was, and that again was the side surface of the cut that I suppressed. I'm going to expand the children handling dialog box. And we can see that it only has one child over here. I always like to also use the roll to to roll back to that feature. I'm going to select this surface as the new reference that should be used by that round instead. Now I will click OK. And that round is no longer failing. This round is failing. Let's use edit references again. And this time it's that surface that's missing. Again, I always like to expand child handling, see if I can take care of multiple failed features at one time. And then roll to and say, hey, let's have it use this surface instead. So I will click OK out of there. And again, now we have this other round that is failing. Let's edit references and saying, hey, what edge should I be using over here? Well, you should be using that edge there. And what edge should I be using over there? Well, here's the edge that you should be using. And now I will click the OK button. And so that way I used edit references to take care of any of the different failures. Let's now select this cut and delete it. We know, oops, let, still using that one over there. Let's go to options and it wants to delete the child. Let's choose suspend instead. And now let's do our edit references again. So the edge that it wants to use in this particular case, let me choose roll to, should be this edge over here and this edge over there. That's good. Let's click the OK button. And so that way I was able to get rid of that cut that I didn't like. But I also don't like the fact that there are four different round features here in the model. And really what we can do is we can actually do all of these in the same feature. So let me select these three rounds, right click, and then choose to delete them and highlighted features will be deleted. Please confirm OK. Now let's go to this particular round and I'm going to edit definition. And actually, you know what? I need this round in here first to get those tangent references. Let me create a new round feature and I'll select this edge. Let's change the radius down to value that it had there. Let me hold down the control key and get that one in the same reference and this one and this one. I didn't see any reason why all those rounds just couldn't be in the same feature. And I'll just drag it up above the chamfer. So that is good. Let's see one other thing that I want to put in here is a relation so that when I change the diameter of the shaft, I want the head to change automatically. So let's go to the model intent overflow and choose relations. And let's see, I want this feature, the head diameter, that to be equal to the shaft diameter plus one. Now I'll click the OK button. And I should have everything that I need in order to generate the family table. I'm not going to have the cut change. I don't think I need to have the fillets change uh, when the size of the bolt changes. So let's create our family table. 
Let's go to the model intent overflow and then choose family table. And in this particular one, I'm just going to have two columns. I'm going to have a column for the, let's see, I know I want the, oh, there it is. There's the bolt diameter, or the shaft diameter. And here we have the length. That's good. Let's click the OK button. Now I will create my instance that I want. And let me just call this bolt. I'm just going to make a few instances in here. Uh, let's see. Let's select this one and then use the patternize functionality. And let's see, I want to have different variations of the shaft diameter. Let's see, I'm going to have, I'm only going to make like six, I think. I'll see, wait. Of the, let's see, we're going to have the shaft diameter. And the increment is going to be 0 0.5. Oops, let me cancel out of here. I want to make sure that this dimension is changed first. Uh, this is going to be a value of 1. I accidentally created another instance over here. So now let's delete that row. Select this one. And now we'll patternize. Let's see again. I said I wanted to do 8 instances with the shaft diameter increasing by value of 0.5. And for each of those, let's add in a, another direction. I'm going to have different values of the length. Let's see. I want to have, I don't know, five. That should be enough. Yeah. Let's make eight. And I'm going to have the length increment by a value of one. So that's good. Let's click the OK button. And that way I rapidly get a whole bunch of different instances created in here. Normally I would go and change the names at this point, but eh, it's a lot of work to be done in there. Uh, just taking a look here, I have the different diameters going from a value of 0.5 and with a length of 1. And then we have the diameters going from 0.5 to value of 4 and here with a length of two. And so that way I have a whole bunch of different instances that I can use in my later demo. Let's go to the verify button and hit verify. And I'm imagining that all these should be a success. I'd be surprised if I get any regeneration failures from such a simple model. Famous last words. That is good. Let's click the close button out of here. And I'm just going to look for the one that has the, uh, let's see, we have a diameter of two and a length of four. Let me scroll down over here because that's the one that I need to pop back in over here. And for this one, I will change the name just so that I will be able to recognize it. And so that's length of two. Let's see, I'm going to change name here. Let's put D2 and then L4. Just so I know that that's the instance that I want. All right, that's good. Let's click the OK button out of there. Everything is good. Let me save this and hop back over to my assembly. And we've got the bolt over here. Let me select the lead one in the model tree. Then I can right click and choose replace. And it's got family table automatically selected as the method. Let me use the open button. And again, I renamed that one instance just so that hopefully I could find it. There it is, down at the bottom. Click the OK button and then OK. And so now when I expand over here, you can see that we have the name of the instance and the name of the generic over there. One other place I've got to do that, let's select this bolt, right click and hold, and then choose replace. And family table, let me use the open button, and the instance that I want is down here at the bottom. Click the OK, and OK. 
and that way now my model is prepared for the fourth in the series of pro program and that's going to be replacing instances of a family table using the lookup instance function. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolewindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.